An Introduction to Investment Banks, Hedge Funds, and Private Equity by David Stoll provides an exhaustive exploration into the world of complex financial institutions and their roles within the global economy. The book breaks down the intricacies of investment banks, the strategies of hedge funds, and the workings of private equity firms, unveiling how each contributes to financial markets and corporate finance. Here's our pick of top 10 insights from the book. One, investment banks play a dual role as both advisors to corporations on transactions and as intermediaries in capital markets. So investment banks are the Swiss army knives of the financial world, multi-talented and always handy. On one side, they're whispering sweet strategies in the ears of corporations, like a cunning matchmaker plotting a corporate romance, merger or acquisition, anyone? On the other, they're bustling about the capital markets like caffeinated squirrels scurrying to connect money havers with money needers. It's financial yin and yang, where they smooth talk their way into deals and simultaneously juggle the almighty dollar to make the economic world go round. Essential? Absolutely. Overachievers? You bet. Just don't ask them to make you a coffee, unless it's a billion dollar espresso. Two, the Volcker Rule significantly changed the landscape for investment banks by restricting proprietary trading and ownership of hedge funds and private equity funds. Ah, the Volcker Rule, the regulatory equivalent of telling investment banks they can't have their cake and eat it too, with a side of hedge fund frosting and private equity sprinkles. This financial fund police edict threw a proverbial wrench in the money-making machinery forcing the Wall Street wizards to play nice, at least in the public playground. The rule essentially made banks choose between being a bored spectator with skin in the game or the daredevil trading on their own account. Proprietary trading desks were dismantled quicker than a house of cards in a tornado, leaving banks to grapple with a new identity crisis and a serious nostalgia for the good old days of risk-taking razzmatazz. Three, hedge funds use a wide array of strategies that can include leverage, derivatives, and short selling, which are not typically found in traditional mutual funds. Imagine a world where financial wizards don capes, not of silk, but of complex financial instruments like leverage and derivatives, and deploy them in a battlefield called the market. Hedge funds, unlike their more reserved cousins, the mutual funds, are like the maverick adventurers of the finance realm. They harness the power of borrowing, leverage, to amplify their bets, sprinkle some magic dust with derivatives to craft new types of investments, and they're even known to sow plots of profit in the doom-laden soil of declining stocks with short selling. While mutual funds might cautiously hike well-trodden paths, hedge funds are out there, free climbing the financial cliffs with a strategy for every crag and crevice. Four, unlike mutual funds, most hedge funds pursue absolute return strategies aiming to achieve positive returns regardless of market conditions. Ah, hedge funds, the financial world's alchemists. These crafty institutions don't simply ride the wave of booming markets, but strive to surf upstream if need be, crafting an elixir of gains come bull or bear. It's like having an investment GPS that reroutes you around traffic jams or, in this case, market downturns, all in the name of the holy grail of finance, positive returns. While mutual funds often sway to the rhythm of the market's highs and lows, most hedge funds are like financial ninjas, flipping, tumbling, and using sophisticated strategies to sneak up on profits, regardless of the economic weather. They're not just playing the game. They're trying to win it in all conditions even in the rain without an umbrella. Five, private equity firms often use leveraged buyouts, LBOs, 
to acquire companies with significant amounts of borrowed money with the intention of improving them and selling at a profit. Ah, the daring dance of the private equity PE world, the leveraged buyout LBO. Picture a business masquerading as an unpolished gem. Enter the PE firms, those financial wizards with an appetite for risk and a keen eye for potential. Armed with a seemingly magical potion of borrowed money, they sweep in and take control. Their spell, pouring in just enough cash, but mostly debt, to take over, all while plotting an enchanting transformation. Their endgame is to buff that company to a high shine and flip it for a fairy tale ending. Read Fat Profits. It's like extreme home makeover. Just replace the house with a company and tie Pennington with a bunch of suits crunching numbers and strategizing exits. What could possibly go wrong, right? Only everything, if the enchantment fades and the economic winds shift, leaving our PE heroes holding a very expensive and not so magical pumpkin. Six, private equity and hedge funds are primarily structured as limited partnerships to align interests between the investors, limited partners, and the managers, general partners. Ah, the limited partnership structure, the double-edged sword of finance. It's like a financial marriage where the managers are general partners and investors, the doting limited partners, tie the knot. But why the wedding? To ensure both parties are waltzing to the same tune of profits. Managers eat what they cook since they have skin in the game, and investors are protected by limited liability, basically the prenup agreement. If things go south, investors don't lose the shirt off their backs. It's a harmony of interests, or so we hope, because, as in any relationship, it's all fun and profits until someone misreads the market. Seven, the compensation structure for hedge fund managers typically includes a management fee and a performance fee, incentivizing them to maximize returns. Ah, uh, the old two and 20 structure that lures hedge fund managers like bees to honey. This delicious combo platter of fees means managers are not just chillin' with a flat management fee, often around 2% of assets under management, but also salivating over a performance fee that can rocket up to 20% of the fund's profits. Here's where the hedge fund maestros earn their keep, wielding their financial wizardry to cook up returns that don't just sizzle, they pop. It's high stakes with high rewards, creating a Gordon Gecko-esque incentive for them to make your money work harder than it ever has before. Just remember, while they're gunning for those capital gains, they're also eyeing a slice of that sweet, sweet profit pie. Bon appetit. Eight, the two and 20 fee structure in hedge funds refers to a 2% management fee on assets and a 20% performance fee on profits, highlighting the high reward potential for fund managers. Ah, the classic two and 20 fee structure, the sweet, sweet music to hedge fund managers' ears and at times a discordant note for the investors. This is where math meets big money, folks. The 2% management fee is the unshakable groupie hanging on to the total assets under management, regardless of the performance. It's like a tax for the privilege of their financial wizardry, or at least that's how the managers see it. Then sachets in the 20% performance fee, the real rock star, showing off the wild side of potential profits. This is the eat what you kill part of the equation, aligning managers' interests with the investors. If the fund hits high notes, everyone's pockets jingle jangle with joy. However, this glamorous fee model has also raised eyebrows and debates. It's a model that can turn managing hedge funds into an art form, where the canvas is green and the paint is made of cold hard cash. Just consider it the Wall Street's version of a standing ovation for themselves. Nine, some investment banks have proprietary trading groups that use the bank's capital to take speculative positions in the market, which can lead to conflicts of interest with their clients. Picture this, 
investment banks straddling the fence between their clients' interests and their own wild ride on the Wall Street roller coaster. Enter the daredevil proprietary trading groups. They're like the secret double agents within the banks, sneakily using the bank's own stash of cash to bet on market swings. High fives are exchanged in these groups when they score big, but when their fortune-telling flubs, it sends shutters down the corporate spine. The real kicker? They might be playing tug-of-war with investments that directly affect the clients they're supposed to serve. Conflict of interest? Or a thrilling gamble? You decide, but it's akin to a chef salting your meal while secretly betting on your thirst. Ten, the rise of shadow banking, entities that do bank-like activities but are not regulated as banks, has increased the complexity and interconnectedness of the financial system. Shadow banking, it sounds like a financial thriller waiting to happen, right? These mysterious entities sidestep traditional banking rules faster than a nimble cat burglar evading a laser security system. They undertake bank-esque activities, lending, securitization, oh my while tactically ducking under the regulatory red tape limbo stick. Is it financial innovation or a system stressing specter? The tension is palpable. By weaving an intricate web of interconnectedness, they've turned the financial system into a complex, adrenaline-fueled jungle gym where the stakes are sky high and the safety nets? Well, let's just say they're not up to code. So as investors flit through this shadowy playground, they'd best remember, it's all fun and games until someone defaults on their credit default swaps. To sum it up, the book, An Introduction to Investment Banks, Hedge Funds, and Private Equity, offers a comprehensive look into the intricate roles these financial institutions play in the global economy, detailing their strategies, operational methods, regulatory impacts, and compensation incentives. Thanks for watching, and may you find clarity and understanding as you delve into the complexities of investment banking, hedge funds, and private equity.